My name is Troy Dreyer. I'm the editor for OnlineVideo.net and the organizer of this conference. Uh, and uh, hold on, just pulling up some notes. And um, this is the first time we've done this show. And I, th I think we've got a really special show for you. When we went to organize it, I said I'm just going to ask the best people and see what they say. And I can always go to the B team if I need to. And all the best people said yes. I'm really excited to bring you uh, some fantastic speakers. We're looking at the future of, of uh, video marketing today. The theme of our conference is Pivot Point, the idea that this is the point where we're going to pivot into the future. This is the bend in the hockey stick. This is where we've learned our lessons, we've learned what works and what doesn't work, and when we can really start accomplishing things. So we've got a great lineup of people who are going to build on that theme and help you bring your video marketing efforts to the next levels. Um, let's see. We have, uh, I'm a, a reporter, and one thing that's always important to me when going to conferences is am I going to get some news out of it? And so in organizing this, I definitely wanted there to be news. I wanted to make sure that we had breaking news. It wasn't just the same discussions that we've heard over and over. So our first speaker is going to talk to us about an exciting new feature coming from Alfonso. Later in the day, we have someone from the Trustworthy Accountability Group who is going to prevent, present some fresh advertising data. And later in the day after that, we have someone from Nielsen who's coming, and they're going to prevent, present some fresh audience research. So I'm really excited about all the news that is breaking here at this show today. And we might even get some more people in the room, so that would be cool, too. Um, I want to point out that we have a coffee meetup at 2.45. Uh, I know it's always awkward talking to people at conferences. I always feel weird about it, but I'm always glad that I did afterwards. So please go to the coffee meetup. It's going to be in the expo hall at 2.45. Look for the red carpeted area and uh, look for other people in advertising and marketing and just introduce yourself and get to know them and exchange cards. Uh, everything in the Video Marketing Power Summit will be in this room except for our closing keynote, which is a group keynote for all the conferences going on here today, and that will be in Gramercy, and that is by Google. So you'll want to stay for that at 4. Uh, the hashtag, if you like what you see and you want to t text something that, uh, something that one of our presenters has said, the hashtag is VP, VMP Summit, all together, VMP Summit. And we have an app, if you don't want to use the, uh, the printed guide, it's called Hello Crowd. Uh, you can find it in the store. It's uh, in the App Store. It's uh, kind of a, it does a lot of different conferences. So download Hello Crowd and then look for Streaming Media East and Video Marketing Power Summit is part of that. Uh, I also want to thank our sponsor, Inspire VR, who we'll be hearing from later today. So uh, with that, we're going to start with our first discussion of the day. I'm going to ask Mark to come up on stage. Mark Gall is the Chief Revenue Officer for Alfonso. And he is going to talk to us about uh, an exciting new feature that they are set to release. Great. Troy, where's my uh, on-stage music? Where I, you know, when I come on stage, I get, get my song. <coughs> I thought I was going to... No? Maybe some Rocky music? No, and I was thinking, like, I want to dance with somebody by Whitney Houston. I always think that's a good song. Um, yeah, I don't have that on my iPod. N no, okay. Um, let me click this off. Uh, so how are you? Thanks for inviting me today. Thank you for showing up. Um, I'm sure you've spoken to bigger crowds, but... Uh, no, this is a great crowd. It's this a great a really crowd. wonderful crowd. Thank great you for, crowd. for all for joining. And listen, I got to apologize. The last couple of days have been crazy to, to get on the phone with, and you were so kind and patience with, patient with me. Um, you know, when I was, you know, between airports and going from place to place, and you were very patient. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Well, I understand you're busy. You're flying in and out, making deals. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, today we have a very exciting breaking announcement. Yeah. That uh, Alfonso, well, maybe we should just start out and tell people what Alfonso is. Sure, um, sure. Because I'm sure they know the name, but might not, yeah. what, not, not know exactly what your specialty is. Sure. Um, Alfonso Inc. <clears throat> um, is a, we're a TV data company where we have expertise in brand insights things like understanding where advertisers' ads aired, uh, what the impressions were, 
in terms of viewership impressions or the competitor ads air. Uh, that's one part of our business. Another part of our business is TV to digital targeting. Uh, think about it from watching TV and then our technology recognizes what's on TV, whether the show or the commercial, and we can send an ad call, a commercial to the devices in the room. And the third business is closed loop attribution, which is proof that people saw the ad and then took the desired behavior of going to the store, to the website, downloading the app, things like that. So we're a big uh, player in this space. Um, we do about, uh, build about 175 million. We're the by far the largest in the, in the space of TV, TV to digital targeting. Um, but mostly we've been focusing on the national part, meaning uh, brand insights for national advertisers, uh, targeting nationally from TV to digital. Um, and as, as I mentioned, it's been a very, very uh, good business for us. But we, we knew that local, local television, local markets uh, was a budding opportunity for us. So uh, in the last nine months, we've been investing in going hyper-local, uh, working with lo local broadcast stations, enabling them to pull up insights of what their competitors are, are running on their stations, and then being able to do TV to digital targeting from their local news or, or TV shows or what have you, mm -hmm. and then do the attribution. So we've been in that space, and now we have doubled and tripled and quadrupled down and by the end of this year, we're going to deliver 50 markets, the top, at least the top 50 markets. Mm -hmm. So we're national in scope, but then also have the ability to go local. Mm -hmm. So we're working with the broadcasters, uh, broadcasters uh, in that respect. And, and, and that's the announcement. The announcement that we're going to be offering up at Cannes in, in the middle of June is literally a dive into the attribution. So we can talk a little bit about that today, give you a prequel on what we're going to be announcing in June. Well, that's awesome. I'm so glad that you're breaking that here. Sure. So let me just recap. So your business is not only serving ads through connected TVs, mm -hmm. but then measuring the results. Correct. You can tell how many people took action after seeing mm -hmm. an ad on their TV, mm -hmm. and an action could be what? An action could be, did you actually go to the store? Mm -hmm. um, so if you saw the Taco Bell ad, let's, let's pretend we're using Taco Bell. You saw the ad on TV. Did you actually then go to the Taco Bell drive through did you go to, to, the, uh, to the restaurant itself? Mm -hmm. And what we were able to do is we're bringing in live location data from our partners. And that live location data is, is literally brought in every hour, refreshed every hour of all the IDs that have been to a Taco Bell, right? And now we're now matching those IDs against the people who have watched, the IDs have watched the ad on TV in our 35 million US TV households. So now we're able to do a, a, a lift analysis on whether the TV ads are actually driving the behavior of actually going to the store. Mm -hmm. So we do that on, on a national basis, and we've offered that for the last year. On the local basis, that's phenomenal, because the local TV stations are, they compete against uh, you know, the, the typical YouTube and Facebook, but also national cable. Um, they have to compete against uh, the the local interconnects. So they, uh, they, they, they looked at our offering, the ability to do TV to digital targeting from their, their TV shows, as well as the attribution to prove that local TV works. And it's really phenomenal business. And this must open up your service to an enormous number of advertisers who would never have thought about you before Correct. because they only sell in one area. Correct. So we work with about uh, 500 advertisers on a national basis. Um, but when we start working with the local broadcasters, you're thinking of tens of thousands of advertisers. Mm -hmm. So you know, right now, uh, in the top 12 markets, we, we're literally working with tens of thousands of new commercials. And so think everything from the, the, the local uh, uh, restaurants or the, the local plumbing and heating companies and things like that, mm -hmm. but also the, the franchises, uh, the local car dealerships. So all those ads we're recognizing with our technology and then being able to prove that people who saw that local dealership ad actually went to that dealership store. So if I have a local liquor store and I buy ad placement with you, where is it going to show? So actually you would, you, you would work with uh, the, the local liquor store would work with the local TV station. So let's, let's pretend uh, KHOU in Houston is one of our, one of our customers. Um, what they would do is they would... Uh, sell an advertising schedule to that, that local store, that mm -hmm. local uh, liquor store. Mm -hmm. And then what we would do is be able to help 
KHOU uh, proved that people who saw the liquor store ad actually went to the liquor store, that exact liquor store. Mm -hmm. And we do that through the, lo uh, the location um, data that we're, that we're getting piped into our servers. But we're also able to do website attribution as well. So let's pretend that the liquor store has a, has a website offering where it gets delivered. You know, you go online and you order it and it comes in an hour or something like that. Um, we are able to prove that you've seen the ad, the liquor store ad on TV, on KHOU in the local news or uh, late night or what have you. And then you went to the website and you actually ordered the, the, uh, the, the case of beer or what have you. That's what we're, we're able to do. So I wouldn't go through your company to buy the ad? No, you would go through the, uh, the, the broadcaster. And then when does your company get involved? In so our company gets involved by, by being the conduit, being able to uh, serve the ads. What, we're able, what we do is we got, we're able to identify all the commercials and all the content on in, in Houston, for example, mm -hmm. and literally recognize that content, serve the ads right, to the folks in the room, mm -hmm. right? So that, that gives the local TV station added inventory to sell. It's TV mm -hmm. to digital targeting. So that is... So I buy the spot through the TV company, but you sell it. I mean, you stream I, it. I enable it. Right. The, the local sales team for the broadcasters sells the, uh, sells the attribution as well as the targeting. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that they do. So they... They have, they're, they're beginning to have a big business in the TV to digital targeting, mm -hmm. and they have an ability to do attribution, and that attribution is, is ROI, is proof that local TV works. Proof that when you watch the ad on KHOU, for example, in the local news or where ha what have you, that people see it, and then they actually went to the dealership or they actually went to the, to the liquor store. Is this like a white label service? Do people No, know? no, we don't do any white label, uh, it's Alfonso, Inc. Okay. Branded. So okay, so it is branded. So mm -hmm. people know they're working with sure. you, even yep. though they're going through their their local. Yep. But it's a, it becomes a service that the local TV company then can offer. Correct. Exactly. Without investing anything more, they just get this great this service that they can offer Correct. advertisers. Correct. And uh, how do you match that data? How, like sure. how do you know what I've seen and sure. where I've been? Sure. So um, one of the things that that we do on. on on our insights business, uh, we're literally bringing in commercial feeds of ad-supported TV, as well as originals, OTT originals. Think, you know, uh, HBO, Hulu, Netflix, Amazon Prime. We're bringing these originals into our into our servers, and we're literally being we're literally able to identify what you're watching. Mm -hmm. On one side of the business, we know uh, what is on TV. On the, sec on the other side of our business, we know in 35 million U.S. TV households what you're watching on TV. Mm -hmm. and, we, and we know that through our automatic content recognition piece of technology that we have in over 210 million devices. Um, and and what, what 210 million devices dedupes down to is 35 million U.S. TV households. Mm -hmm. So this technology of ours is able to recognize content. And that content is what you're watching on TV. It's the show. It's the network. or the commercial. We literally index all the commercials, meaning when we are bringing in these live commercial feeds, we're capturing every ad and then using three bits of technology to identify the ad, give it a, a fingerprint, and then now we're able to tag that ad and follow that around, whatever that ad it runs. If it runs locally or nationally or regionally, we're able to identify it, where it ran, timestamp it, and then be able to prove that it, it ran at this time and that what it delivered in terms of a viewership number, 18 to 49 or what have you. Mm -hmm. So then we're able to literally recognize what's on, on TV, serve the ad to the IDs in that room, and then follow those IDs, think mobile phones, right? We're able to follow those IDs to Taco Bell or to Target or to the Ford dealership. What, uh, you said you're on 210 million devices? 210 million devices. What are those devices? So mobile phones, tablets, TVs themselves. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we're, we have our automatic content recognition SDK embedded in apps and phones and tablets, embedded in TVs themselves, mm -hmm. uh, in the operating system, the, the brains of the TV. And together, uh, those, those uh, devices, all 210 million, what we do, every month we, we download them to Experian. And then Experian dedupes it to the household level because 210 million devices doesn't mean anything to you. It doesn't give you any context. Mm -hmm. But people know what 35 million households are. 
Uh, most people know in our business that there's 119 million TV homes, US TV homes. When you're in 35 million, you're one out of every three. That's size and scale, that's massive. Mm -hmm. The closest competitor, I mean, if you think of Nielsen, Nielsen's in 42,000. That people meet is in 42,000, we have 35 million. Yeah. We're not a competitor to Nielsen, I'm just giving you an idea for context. Pretty could be. <laughs> well, they're pretty good at what they do. Yeah. I don't think we want to do that. Um, but that, that ability to connect one-to-one -one in 35 million households is, is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody comes close to it in terms of that ability to target or that ability to follow the ROI, which is the attribution. Is it on my phone? Are you your staff for well, my phone? You know, well, um, we, good question. So um, we work with publishers. Uh -huh. We have thousands of publishing partners. So uh, what we do is we embed our ACR piece of technology mm -hmm. in with app publishers. Right. And the, the types of publishers we work with are, are across the board. So, so think sports and weather and lifestyle and gaming. And, and what we do, we, we, we work with those publishers. We embed our SDK. And now as long as the phone is on, mm -hmm. it acts as a recognition device for content. Mm -hmm. But it's the content that we are indexing and bringing live into our, uh, into our servers. So, like for example, um, we probably have a one in three chance of being in your phone. A one in three chance? Yeah, something like that. And I would assume that I wouldn't get charged for data that's going up because you're probably always recognizing audio and sending data up. We just, we recognize content. Right. Um, so in terms of what it costs or the powering, it's, it's very important that it doesn't draw a lot of battery usage. Yeah. Uh, so, so we have uh, the leading edge, we're the leading edge in terms of um, technology for ACR. Mm -hmm. In fact, um, the, the organization that invented ACR, Bell Labs, uh, the, the team that actually ran the division for ACR came to, to become part of Alfonso. So we have the, the, finest when it, uh, the finest technology when it comes to battery usage and a tech stack. It works, it has to work every time. Mm -hmm. And what that means is when we're recognizing an, an ad on TV or content on TV, the, the technology of, send, of recognizing and sending the ad call has to work. And, and it's a very, very difficult technology to work with. So that's why we're the, you know, having that, that pedigree of uh, the engineers from Bell Labs um, building that technology stack that, that we have puts us ahead of everybody else in the space. Okay, so now we know how it works. Mm -hmm. um, and now people see the reviews, the results on something called a location attribution report, is this right? Yeah, so um, what, you're, what customers are able to do literally right now, if uh, I, I use Taco Bell as an example so I can use it again. Mm -hmm. um, if Taco Bell, if the ad agency uh, that works with Taco Bell wanted to pull up their creatives, their commercials that they ran in the past week or two or three weeks, they can literally go to our dashboard uh -huh pull up, t type in Taco Bell, pull up all the uh, commercials that have ran in the last period of time that they want to measure, click on the ones they want to measure, and then press initiate, and then literally within five minutes, they mm -hmm. will get a report that will, that will match all the folks who, who visited Taco Bell against all the folks who watched the Taco Bell ad in our 35 million homes. So that match is now, it gives you an idea like, what was my brand lift for the TV commercial? Did my, brand, did my TV commercial, did this t a commercial or did that commercial deliver more, uh, more visits to the store, to the Taco Bell store? Mm -hmm. Did my TV work? Did, is prime time better than early fringe? Is it better, better than late fringe? Which networks are actually delivering the most bang for the buck? Those are the types of things that you can get from these reports. You can do it in real time, you don't have to wait to like nine or 10 weeks after the flight is over. I know you have a, a visual. Mm -hmm. Should, is this a good time to switch over yeah, to it? Yeah, sure. Let me see if I can, if I can pull it <clears> in. <throat> okay, we're gonna show you all what this uh, live reporting data looks like. Okay. And magic. Magic happens. Oh, there it is. Got it. Okay, so let me just a little bigger for you folks. So uh, I'm literally going to our insights at Alfonso TV. Anyone can do that, it's a public site. We get about 15,000 unique hits, uh, unique visitors a day from agencies and, and clients. So I'm just gonna type in Taco Bell since we keep on talking about Taco Bell. Am I not on Wi-Fi? Okay, there we go, Taco Bell. 
And I'm going to go over to, oh, just to really quick, what I, when I talked about understanding what's on, uh, what's on TV, this site, uh, our site, uh, which anyone can go to, you literally will lay out all the different commercials by network, by show, by spend, by weekly airings. But I, don't want, I want to get to the part where we talk about. So all of those bars is a different commercials. Correct. These, are different, Taco Bell. these are different commercials. So when I want to get to the attribution part, what I can do is I can just go to Taco Bell. I can do a report, view a report. Now, this must be proprietary, right? It is you, proprietary. Because I thought you said anyone could go to this site. Yeah, anyone can go to the site and, and, and type in their customer and pull up a report. Okay. When you want to get more granular detail, that's when you work with us from a, from a SaaS subscription point of view. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyone can, <clears throat> anybody can do this. And I want to show you the, how, how quickly it is to use. I want to just go initiate a new analysis. And instead of using Taco Bell, let's just use McDonald's, OK? Mm -hmm. Another big customer of ours. McDonald's. Am I not spelling it right? Oh, let me just go with Taco Bell. And then what you do here, so I'm going to create a location attribution report. And I'm going to toggle a time frame. Mm -hmm. Let's just go last quarter. Right? And that's January 1st through the 31st. And now you see all these commercials. These, this, the commercials here, and it looks like there's about 25 of them. Uh, we have all the airings, where they ran, all the commercials. And I'm just going to toggle this one, which is the Taco Bell $5 nacho fries ad, and another $5 craving ad. And let's go, it's got to be another $5. And here, let's go this $5. So now I did, what I did was this toggle three ads, I want to measure attribution. I want to see how many people saw the ad and then went to the store and do a lift study. Mm -hmm. And then I literally want to go, do I look three weeks out, six weeks out, Taco Bell, let's call it Taco Bell ABC, and initiate analysis, All right? And now it says your report is being created, and within five minutes you're going to get the report. And anyone in this room can do it. So that's a type of data that we're able to provide. And, and again, just to be clear on how we do this, we work with location partners, mobile partners. Uh, Safegraph is one of our biggest partners. And where they're literally bringing in uh, mobile data, IDs into our servers, and we're mm -hmm. matching against those IDs in our 35 million households mm -hmm. who's seen the ad. And now we can, we can figure out that of those three ads I clicked for Taco Bell, which one drove the most uh, visits to the Taco Bell store? Um, which networks drove the most visits to the store? Which time periods? Which, you know, we always talk about is prime time really worth the extra CPM? Mm -hmm. Is daytime better? Is sports better than news? All those things you can figure out with this, with this data. And the other thing that we do when we work with, uh, with customers, and this is what the local folks are working with uh, doing now, um, advertisers, um, insurance companies, retailers, uh, QSRs, they're bringing in their CRM data uh, into a safe harbor. Uh, so for Taco Bell, for example, or Allstate, that's another, another example. People can get the idea that Allstate has home policy owners and motorcycle and automotive and all that, uh, policy holders. What they do, they're bringing in their IDs into a safe harbor like United Data Labs, which is HIPAA compliant. They're bringing in their IDs into that safe harbor. And now we're matching against our IDs to their IDs, and, and now getting a match, and then figuring out of their best customers what they actually watch on TV. Mm -hmm. Now you don't have to guess that my best customers, the people who pay the highest policy premium, or are the most loyal customer, you don't have to guess what they're watching. We actually show them what, what, what they're watching. So uh, if, a, if a retailer uh, presents us 20 million shopper IDs, where they have the IP address, bring them into the safe harbor. We match it against our IDs. Again, we have 35 million households, 210 million IDs. We can do a match and then give you a really sharp insight on what they watch and then target them. The beauty of, of it is we know how many times that, uh, the, uh, the viewer has seen that Allstate motorcycle ad three times, five times. You can target them. You can do negative targeting. Those are the types of things that we're, we're bringing to local and have been available to the national advertisers for a while now. Nice. Uh, so right now, when you hit that report, 
millions and millions of checks are being done right now in the background. It, it, exactly. Tens of millions of m mobile IDs are, are literally matching in real time. And then within five minutes, you get the ad. You That's, get the, re the report. It's amazing how much is going on in yep. the background right now. Yep. And you said this is available to everyone, mm -hmm. but what do paid customers get that's sort of beyond this public? Thing? So, so right now, I'll, I'll show you what, what a Taco Bell report for the public would, would be. And there we go. So you get exposed to the TV ad, not exposed to the TV ad. So you see an 8.35 lift. Mm -hmm. That means that the people who saw the ad on TV had an index of 108. That, so TV ads working. That means mm -hmm. what we did, let, let's probably, you know, this was like 1.5 million people saw the ad on TV. So we had to find another 1.5 million people who didn't see the ad on TV mm -hmm. within our 35 million universe, right? And then we had to measure how often they went to the, the to Taco Bell mm -hmm. in the same time frame. Right. So we found that it was an 8% lift. And that's massive. That's pretty big because there's a lot of Taco Bells in the United States. Yeah. So, so. Taco Bell's interested in that, but they also want to know, you know, is prime time versus non-prime time? Well, this data here shows that prime time delivered 15% 15 15 more visits. Mm -hmm. Well, now if you want to really dive into, well, does that make sense versus my cost per point or cost per thousand? Do I spend more on prime time? Do I spend less on prime time? Is 15% a good number? Those are the types of things that we, that we work with. So visit rate, which are the best, best networks? Uh, which are the networks that don't do so well. So a paying customer uh, can dive in and, and, and ask you know, any number of questions on, in terms of the data, and we'll cut it a thousand different ways for her. That's what you get when you work with us from a SaaS relationship. Mm -hmm. Okay, really drill down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm sure everybody who hears about your service starts to wonder about privacy. You probably get sure. this question all the time. Yep. And now, you know, GDPR is so huge, mm -hmm. big issue in Europe. What is, how much are you tracking people? Should we be concerned here? Yeah, good question. Um, so when you think of GDPR, that's, uh, that, that's become a, a common name in our industry or a common couple, couple of letters in our industry over the last month or so. Mm -hmm. um, we've been uh, in the European market now for about a year. We launched in the UK about a year or so ago, and we knew uh, that our technology works. People um, are concerned about, uh, you know, if they're a publisher about GDPR, uh, and, and rightfully so. We don't have any issues with it because what, everything that we do is double opt-in, single opt-out. Mm -hmm. So for uh, our technology to be in your phone, you asked me, is, are we in your phone? Mm -hmm. uh, and you probably have 50 or 60 apps. Mm -hmm. If you download a publisher that has our uh, technology in it, there will be a very clear opt-in. If you opt-in, TV data will be shared. Okay. And then again, they'll do it again one more time. If you, if you opt-in, TV data will be shared, and, and it's going to be used for this and that and the other thing, right? Mm -hmm. So those are paramount to our success. And if you opt in, we don't have a problem. And yeah. we make it very easy, very open, and the, and the opt out is very, very clear. And you can opt out at any time. Plus, we don't prevent you from not going to the app. So let's, let's pretend that uh, you, you're downloading an app and it, and it says an opt in, and you say, I don't want to opt in, but I still want the app. You can still get the app. Mm -hmm. So we're not pre uh, preventing you, the, the user, from actually downloading the app. So mm -hmm. we, we have passed that, uh, uh, that really stringent um, and appropriately stringent uh, policy for GDPR. Okay. So uh, we're, we're continuing to launch uh, in, in Europe. Uh, we have Germany coming up uh, this year. Uh, we're launching in Canada next month. Uh, we've been in the UK, so we continue to launch everywhere around the world. Well, if you're meeting the demands for Europe, then, um, then yeah. that, that, that's the highest for safety right now. Yeah, right? that's what we thought. Yeah. That's what we thought. Okay. Uh, and yours, your software is about the audio fingerprinting part, right? Correct. And then your partner data matches it with sales? So, yeah. So, um, there's, there's an easy way of working with customers. Uh, they could provide their CRM data, and then we can, we can do uh, uh, lift uh, analyses. We can... Mm -hmm. uh, match that and target with them so they can bring their customer data in 
and then we could then, they can retarget off our, I, our IDs after we match. There's a lot of different ways a customer uh, can use us with their CRM data to really focus on their most profitable customers. I mean, mm -hmm. think about it, you know, think about Target, the retailer. They probably have 50 million customers, uh, at least 50 million customers, but probably maybe 10 million are like the most profitable. Right. There's probably 10 million who spend a dollar a month. Who cares? They want the people who are spending a thousand, two thousand dollars a year, mm -hmm. right? And they know the, what those IDs are. Right. They have the credit card data. They have their email address. They have the IP. So they want to understand what those 10 million customers, whether they are watching, and then can we help them target and target them at, 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 at specific points in time. Mm -hmm. That's how we can work with uh, an advertiser. I'm glad you brought that up because I want to ask you about mm -hmm. this for campaign planning. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not just that I would use this and see what gets the best results. Like I can use this and see where I should be putting my money, where Absolutely. I get the best return. Absolutely, so uh, uh, again, not to keep it consistent, we'll use Taco Bell again. Um, Taco Bell probably has a lot of customers, actually we know this data, has mm -hmm. a lot of customers that will spend $5 a visit. Mm -hmm. You get a lot for $5, right? Yeah. But if they wanted to know which TV networks and which time frames uh, deliver the most Taco Bell uh, visits, we know, and that's what we share with Taco Bell. Uh, if they want to know, how about I want to reach the people who spend over ten dollars at Taco Bell? Wow, that's a big, that's a, that's a big number, yeah. ten dollars at Taco Bell. Well, we know that too, because what we do, we we layer on on top of the uh, our segment, we layer on credit card data. So the credit card data is capturing the Taco Bell spend, fifteen dollars, twelve dollars. So we put a line of. $10 and above, let's capture all the IDs that spend $10 and above and then match it to the viewership. So now I can, I can prove that the people who are watching this show or this sporting event or this, this uh, time frame or time period or OTT or what have you, that's the, that program there is delivering the highest value to Taco Bell. And so people might learn that the most expensive ad types you know, on the, on the network are not the ones that develop get offer the best return for them. Absolutely, and that's a common ask is, they want to understand is my prime time delivering the bang for the buck? Right. And also, am I getting equal rotation in the pod position? Everybody wants the A, uh -huh. the first in the, in the commercial, or the right. last, right? A through Z, right? So now that's a type of information that we're offering as well, which is if you get the A's, you get this type of delivery to the store. If you get the middle of the pack, if you're, if you're sandwiched between the C and D, uh, your commercial is the third and fourth of a, of a six commercial pod, now you get this result. So you actually can now uh, identify the best part of the pod, you can identify the time periods, the time frames, the networks, all those things you can now understand it literally in real time. You don't have to wait until your, your schedule is over, your media plan is over. You get it right now. You do it in five minutes. Can you prove ROI for your own service? Can, can we you prove? Say, yes. Yeah. You, you actually here's how can. much money yeah. you'll save buying cheaper, more effective ads. Well, you know what? Um, we became uh, we're a 175 million dollar business, and four years ago we had zero. Uh -huh. Right. Um, and there are other people in our space, and they're really good at what they do. Uh, but we rocketed up to a, a huge number, 175 million in four years. And that's based on results. There are other people that do what we do, but they do it on modeling, which mm -hmm. doesn't make them bad, but we think the, a one-to-one -one deterministic, verified distribution of 35 million homes is going to deliver better results. Mm -hmm. Lookalikes are not as good as understanding a deterministic targeting. It's just not. It, everyone knows that. So the results and, and how fast we have grown our revenue is proof that our service works. And one thing that we haven't really got into today is why people would want to advertise over connected TV. But this is becoming more and more essential, right? A lot of viewers yeah. Yeah, if you think cannot about, be reached otherwise. Yeah, if you think about um, prime time, you know, best time to watch TV, uh, greatest shows, best of the best, but ad supported is losing a lot of viewers and they're losing them to Netflix. They're losing them whether they're watching Netflix on the big screen or watching it on their phone or tablet, but, but there's a migration. Mm -hmm. So what advertisers want to know is 
how, how many people am I missing now in, um, at Supported TV, think the cable networks and the broadcasters, and can I reach them over there? Well, our technology is recognizing those originals on Netflix and HBO and Showtime and mm -hmm. all those great channels, Amazon Prime. So when, when Stranger Things is on or Orange is the New Black is on, I can serve an ad call to the devices in the room. Mm -hmm. Now, there's no ad on the TV, but there's a pre-roll ad. The next ad you're going to see on your phone or your tablet mm -hmm. is going to be your, our customer ad. So you're now syncing. You know who that, all, that viewer is who's watching that show, and that ad is going to be seen. So if anyone's ever wondered, is this an incredible coincidence that I just saw this commercial and now I'm seeing this pre-roll on YouTube or whatever? It's not a coincidence. Well, with YouTube, we don't, do, we don't work with YouTube, but we work with pretty much everybody else. Uh -huh. So if you see... So, so think, think Facebook, think right. Twitter, think New York Times and ESPN, think Snap, uh -huh. social, digital video, that, those are our partners. We haven't, haven't cracked the YouTube yet. <laughs> So there's a reason why the same ad seems to follow me, and it's, it's part, part of it. it part it, of it is your business. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, tell the Nordstrom men's store that I will visit and <laughs> can stop trying to reach me because they have served me ads on every platform. It's amazing. You know, the targeting's been around a long time, and they, we always talk about the pair of pants that follow you around for the next nine years. Yes. We don't. Our customers tend not to do that. So. Well, well, your data must know when people have actually made the purchase, right? So you can, you can. stop at a certain point. Yeah. So. Um, so. We would know, for example, um, if you visited the site, the website, and you've uh, enlisted for a, 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 a test drive mm -hmm. for a new Chevy Nova or what have you, um, or went to a, a, another site or downloaded the app, we would know that. And the customer knows that as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's the constant information that we are providing the advertiser, and the advertiser would know um, as well if they purchased something on their site. Very good. And you help people achieve uh, reach and frequency mm -hmm. in their campaign goals sure. by serving over connected TVs. Sure. So how we're able to do that is because our technology is recognizing all the, the in the household, how many times you've seen that ad. Mm -hmm. let's, let's pretend that, you know, P&G's tied. You know, they, they buy massive amounts of TV. If they continue to buy more TV, their cost per points go up because they're reaching the same person over and over and over again. So they may start reaching, you know, uh, people w not with their ads nine times, 15 times, 20 times. That doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. So with, with us, what they, what they can do is we can now target people who haven't seen that tight ad that falls within their demographic, mm -hmm. or maybe their frequency goal is five. We can serve that person, that household, up to five ads, which is hitting their frequency goal, mm -hmm. but not but not going above um, the, the $5 goal, uh, mm -hmm. the, the five uh, uh, frequency goal. So you're literally lowering your cost per point. You're extending your reach and you're lowering your cost per point. If you can stop the hyper serving of ads to one particular person, then I'm all for it. Yeah, that's, that's one of the things that uh, customers are using us for, to be yeah. able to be really smart and really thoughtful about hitting the right person X number of times and not going over, because uh -huh. that's just wasting money. Uh -huh. um, terrific. Uh, one thing I wanted to ask you, um, so we talked about you serving on uh, broadcast stations. Yeah. Um, do you work with pure online services as well, ad-supported online services? Uh, if we have been in, in talks with uh, other companies that want us to ingest their, their content, uh, I won't, won't speak to that because we haven't done these deals yet, but there are a lot of uh, OTT channels out there, OTT organizations that, that want to work with us. And what that means is that we would be ingesting all their content. So when you're watching, you say you go home at, at night, you turn on, you go to, go to your favorite app, and you start watching that app, that OTT provider. Well, what we can do is help them understand uh, how many people are watching and then be able to do attribution. Um, that's down the line. That'll probably be in the fourth quarter of next year when mm -hmm. we're working with those types of folks. Okay. Um, so let's just recap your big news of the day. Yeah. Um, yeah. About uh, tell, about, tell sure. us about the. Uh... Sure. The big big news is that uh, we're quadrupling down, so to speak, on local, mm -hmm. and we will be in at least fifty, the top fifty markets in the U.S. by the end of this year. 
That's and that awesome. is couples with our national uh, business, but that local business, the top 50 markets, that's half the viewership in the United States. But we're not going to just stop at 50. We're going to go to all 211 markets. Mm -hmm. But the top 50 is massive. It is. And, and, and right now we've, again, like we said, we've doubled down and be able to offer these local broadcasters a real ability to now compete against social and national cable uh, and, and other measured media in those markets by proving that their local ads are actually driving behaviors to the store, to the website, to downloading the app, what have you. And the top 50 markets, it. that's certainly a lot more than 50% of the population. That's like yeah, it's almost. actually, it's actually uh, more than half of the viewership. Right, so. Markets, of, you know, 51 through 211 is the other half. But right. we're gonna get to those two. Really exciting. Um, I'm gonna end it here. I think our second presenter might have got stuck in traffic. Right. I don't see him showing up. I thought he was, I knew he was running late. I okay. haven't seen him show up yet. So I'm going to say uh, thank you right now. We have a little coffee break, I think, and we'll resume here in 10.30 for more Video Marketing Power Summit. Thank you for your thank time. Thank you so much, Mark. Cheers. I really appreciate it. All righty. It.